You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world and next to no cost with credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Thanks for joining me today for another live reaction video responding to the Dave Ramsey Show, the Ramsey Show, Why Can't I Use Credit Cards If I Pay Them Off Every Month? It's a very interesting title here because, of course, if you can be responsible with credit, why wouldn't you put everything on credit cards and reap the rewards, reap the benefits, reap the life flexibility? So let's respond to Dave Ramsey, who's going to say, don't use your credit cards at all. Have a zero credit score. Why are you using credit? It's not worth it. You're going into debt, blah, blah, blah. So let's um, respond to here America's voice on money. In the past, some fans would say, oh, Justin, it's not what Dave is saying. Justin, Dave gives good advice or oh, Dave is just giving advice to a certain audience. But you'll see here in this video, as hopefully you've listened to my other episodes responding to Dave Ramsey, that he's engaging in this black and white thinking of all credit bad, nobody wins, everyone's going to lose, don't bother. So let's uh, start the video here. Today's question comes from Diane in Arizona. My husband and I are in baby step two and are working hard to pay off our debt. The one issue we struggle with is not using credit cards. We use them. Yes, it is an issue. If you're making purchases, you're not using credit. That is definitely an issue. If you're using debit or cash, you're not gaining any rewards. You're not enjoying certain benefits like purchase protections, travel protections, other things that I've talked about in previous episodes. You're not getting rewards. You're having to use your own money rather than using other people's money and paying it back. So yes, it is a problem if you're not using credit cards, assuming you can spend responsibly, manage credit responsibly. We have to pay our utilities, groceries, and other monthly bills, but we never carry a balance. Correct. So use credit to buy things that you can afford. Put your regular spend expenses on credit rather than using cash or debit. You're not going out of your way, buying all this random stuff and going into debt. This caller is saying, look, I'm just putting my everyday expenses, my utilities. So these are things that the caller is spending on anyway. So if you're going to be spending money anyway, why would you not put it on a credit card, get the rewards, and then pay it off in full? By doing this, we're able to travel for vacations for free using our points. What's wrong with doing this if we're not going into more debt? Correct, you're not going into more debt, you're not going into debt, you're paying it off in full. There's no debt at all. Yes, you will gain rewards, you will go on vacations. Maybe it's not totally free, as Dave will criticize in the video. I'm not here to say, oh, it's all totally free. Everything is covered. I'm usually using the phrase low cost, sometimes traveling at no cost. Like, look, well, my flight and hotel was covered, but I had small expenses paying for other things. But it's very, very low cost, and it's surely better than paying cash in full or paying the full price of people who aren't using credit. People I hear from on a regular basis of, I only take one vacation a year because that's all I can afford, or I don't travel because travel is too expensive. Well, if I can tell you here, responsibly managing credit, getting multiple cards, using benefits, is going to grant you rewards to greatly discount travel, making it next to no cost, then why not put your everyday expenses on cards and benefit? Let's hear what Dave has to say. The age-old question, Dave. The age old uh, Dave is smiling here. Old question. We've been exploring this topic on the fine print because it's one of the biggest objections we get uh, here at Ramsey. People are going, well, Dave, I pay off my card every month. I get some free stuff. What's the harm? Yes. What's the harm? You're putting expenses on your credit card. You're paying it off in full. You're not paying interest. You're not paying unnecessary fees. You're getting rewards as long as you're spending responsibly, as long as you're managing credit responsibly. What's the problem? Right. So we should clue in Bank of America and Chase <laughs> what portion of their marketing is working the best. And it is this crap. Okay, so so right out the gate, this crap. Their marketing, it, it's crap. So uh, are, are we going to have an argument here? Because a, a lot of Dave is like, oh, you're stupid. You're dumb. This is dumb. You're dumb as rocks. But let's hear. The vacations. The yeah. points. This is the one. This is the one that's got people believing in stupidity. People believing in stupidity. Still, after all this time. Yeah. 
And here's what happens, and you can listen to the, the true cost of credit card rewards. This is the second fine print episode that we released, and we dug into this with an ex-Capital One insider. Okay, so this person used to work for Capital One. They're saying, look, a lot of people signed up for cards. Capital One's making money. Okay, great. Some people are going to pay interest. Some people are not going to be responsible with spending. But what I'm saying here is if you can be responsible with spending, you're embracing a frugal life. You're being mindful about your spending. As Dave Ramsey says, be mindful of your spending. Be frugal. Okay, well, if you could do it with debit or cash, why not do it with credit? Now, if you can't manage it, then maybe don't play the game. If you can't manage alcohol, then maybe you shouldn't drink alcohol. If you can't manage gambling, then maybe you shouldn't gamble. Saying that something is bad just because some people falter is not an accurate depiction here. Things in themselves, in so many cases, aren't good or bad. It depends how you use it. Money can be used for good or bad. It's really a neutral thing here. Just like credit, you can use credit for good or you can make poor decisions, you can end up in bad spots and end up paying interest, getting in debt. But this caller saying, look, I just put my everyday expenses on, I pay it off in full, what's the problem? But we're, we're going to get these arguments from Dave like, oh, even though you say that, I don't think that's true. Oh, you're buying into stupid marketing. Oh, that's dumb. Okay, what did they say? Uh, she said they run 10,000 experiments a year on people to figure out what's going to get them to spend more, to use the points, and one of the biggest ways they do it. Okay, so what what do we really mean, spend more? So are people actually spending more just because they have credit? Personally, and I'm very, very confident this is the case for many of my listeners, and many people even who just have one credit card or play the game at a low level, it's okay, well, I'm not going to put it on my, I'm not going to use cash for this, I'm just going to put it on a credit card. I'm going to the grocery store, I'm estimating spending about $75. Uh, rather than giving the cashier cash, having to deal with change, getting nothing back, and by the way, paying an interchange fees. This is something I brought up in previous episodes that many merchants have to pay fees to use the credit card processing systems in stores. So if you're using cash, you're paying for those merchant fees, the interchange fees, the transaction fees, and you're getting back zero on it. While me using cards that are giving something like 6% back on groceries, 4.5% back on groceries, 4x on groceries, depending on cards I'm using, you're using cash, you're getting nothing back, you're paying into merchant fees, getting nothing back for it, so you're kind of losing twice there. So, okay, well, look, I have some dental work coming up, so I'm going to apply for a new card. I'm more likely to put it on a card rather than using cash because I know I'm getting rewards. So is it really spending more? You know, are these people saying, well, you know, I wouldn't buy a Gucci bag, but since I have the ability to buy it on credit, I'm just going to buy it. Now, if it's something you can't afford, then I don't recommend doing that. Maybe there are some people out there who will say, oh, worry about it later. Who cares? You only live once, but I'm not advocating that. I'm advocating smart spending. I'm advocating mindfulness. It's not a ruinous situation that everyone who's using credit is spending more as Dave Ramsey and his co-host here are making it seem to be. It is through the points because you know how the points work. They mm -hmm. don't say it's $500. They say you're going to get 128,000 points. Yeah, so they make it seem like a bigger number. That's fine. And you know, it's actually better to get points rather than cash back in many cases because the points are more valuable than one cent per point, especially when used well. So if it's like, okay, well, you can get 50,000 points or $500 cash back, and I could use points for 1.5 cents per point, then I'm better off taking the points in most circumstances. So it's like, <laughs> here he's like smiling, his hands are in the air, like, oh, the points, the points, they're not telling you real numbers. Well, it's like, I used to listen a lot and still do to Christopher Hitchens, who had died, and in a lot of his debates, he would say, so you strike me as someone else who hasn't researched the other side of the arguments. And that, that's what I think a lot with Dave Ramsey. Like, they have this really, really low view of credit cards. They're not thinking about what I'm thinking. They're not actually engaging with serious arguments from people in miles and points spaces explaining why they do what they do. They're misunderstanding the basics of credit. They're misunderstanding the basics of rewards. And they're just giving these silly examples like, oh, well, you know, points, it's not real money. Oh, there are blackout dates. Oh, they're not really worth what you think they are. Well, okay, there are going to be some blackout dates, whether you use cash or points. But if you prepare enough in advance, you'll find ways to travel. You'll have 
optimally multiple cards, multiple currencies, multiple ways to win. You can't always get what you want. Things aren't always going to be available. But you know what? With enough preparation, we can make it happen. But you using cash and debit, you're going to face some issues too. Oh, well, I'd like a nonstop flight to Seattle. Well, that's not always going to be available. Sometimes you'll have to look for availability. Sometimes you'll have to pick a different day. That you can use to redeem flights that cost $74,000 and the points change every day. Yeah, America loves math. We get it. Okay, yes, the points change every day. In some cases, because the cash rates change in many cases. Points are cash. The rates are going to change because maybe the flight gets really popular and the prices go up or maybe there are many seats and the price goes down. The market fluctuates. We know this. So what? And there's blackout dates and there's restrictions. And on top of that, uh, the whole 2% cash back. That one is one of my favorites. Because you know what 2% of $1,000 is? <laughs> so here's this, uh, this idea. Well, you know, you have to spend $1,000 and you're only getting this small amount. But it's spending that we're doing anyway. Isn't 2% of 1000 better than 0%, or 0 back on 1000 When you're using cash and debit, you're getting no rewards. Look, I had some auto insurance payment coming up. So instead of paying with a check in the mail, writing out a stamp or using um, an electronic funds transfer, using my debit online or going to the AAA club and paying in cash, I can put it on a credit card. Even if I only get back 2% cash back on $1,000, it's still better than getting nothing back. It's spending we're doing anyway. It's not like, well, I'm going to buy that $1,000 special wallet because I'm getting 2% back. Like, is anyone thinking like that? I hope you, listener, you're not thinking like that. Be smart. $20. Oh, $20. Yeah, $20 that I wouldn't have had if I used cash. 20 bucks to spend a thousand and uh yeah not really 20 bucks to spend a thousand it's 20 back on 1000 money that we're spending anyway uh, that's not a great deal yeah so i'm walking down the street i see a 20 dollar bill do i just reach down and get it or well you know i i don't really think so it's just going to take a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of a stretch here like maybe you listener won't pick up the penny or the nickel but this really seems like found money. Money I'm spending anyway, I can put on a credit card, even if I'm only getting $20 back on my $1,000 transaction, why not take that money? And even at a higher level, I'm engaged in a lot of reselling. I'm buying products and can resell them because I know it's profitable. If I had to use cash, I would do it, but instead of using cash, I can use credit, and boom, here's an extra $20 in his example. But you're setting the floor at this 2% back on 1000 but it's very often more than 2% back because I'm often signing up for different cards and I'm getting a high welcome bonus. I mentioned the Chase Sapphire Preferred at the time of recording April 22, 2023, 80,000 points for signing up for the Chase Sapphire Preferred, more than $800 in value. Spend 4,000 in 90 days and we'll give you 80,000 bonus points. So if I have upcoming expenses, I know I'm going to be spending $4,000 in 90 days, which I think would be reasonable for many people, even at a very basic level of just everyday expenses. Maybe you have dental work coming up. Maybe you have some car repairs, whatever. You can plan. You can be strategic. And you get that big rebate. And even if it's only that $20, okay, fine. It's spending I'm doing anyway. But many cards also bonus spending. So as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we're getting 6% back, 4% back. 4.5. Depending on where you're spending in certain categories, you're going to get more than 2% back. And again, it's just spending you're going to do anyway, so why not get the bonus? We're just paying the cards off in full at the end of the month, so we're getting extra money. We're getting a rebate on our spending. So let me let me get this straight. If you spend $10,000, <laughs> you get 200 bucks. Yes. We spent $10,000 on things we were going to spend on anyway over time, and we got a rebate of $200. This is better than getting $0 rebate. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. That'll make you rich. Yeah. Oh, that'll make you rich. So this idea or implication, well, it's not worth doing if you can't get rich. Credit cards aren't going to make you rich, so don't do it. Well, Dave, one thing usually isn't going to make you rich. 
it's usually a combination of things. There's an element of chance involved. Some people just get really, really good opportunities and get backing or they have this idea and it goes off. You know, you make a YouTube video, it goes super viral and you're the sensation and all of a sudden you're on all these TV shows. Yes, there's some skill. Yes, there's some luck. It's complicated, but it's usually not one thing that's making you rich. And even if something doesn't make you rich, why shouldn't we do it? Are you going to tell your listeners, Dave, well, look, hey, you can download an app from Rita's Italian Ice and pick up free Italian ice. And, well, you were considering going there because it's the summer and you wanted Italian ice for some reason. Oh, don't do that. Oh, don't don't take the free Italian ice. That's not going to make you rich. That's not worth it. Or maybe you see, hey, today um, the local Indian restaurant has a buffet for $10 and other days it would be $20. Well, it's not going to make you rich if you go on a Wednesday. So just go on another day. Don't worry about it. It's like, look, we can do small things to save money and make money. It's not going to make us rich. But saving here and there, making money here and there adds up over time. What's so bad about it? Oh, it doesn't make you rich. Don't do it. Is that really what he's suggesting here? Spend 10000 get 200 that's a formula for wealth building right there. <laughs> it actually is. We have many other things that we're doing to build wealth. We, we can't invest and use credit card rewards. We can't engage in some business activities like reselling I mentioned that's working towards wealth and get credit card rewards at the same time. So you're telling all of these people who sell items on eBay and Amazon who are using credit, buying items, reselling it for profit. Oh, well credit card rewards don't bother with that just use your cash just use your debit card i know that you can take in maybe an extra thousand or two but don't take that money don't do that that's not worth it that's not going to make you rich we did an analogy did uh, you people go to grade school <laughs> it's just so comical and bad it's like if i were to just make this parody of critics of the hobby who just give really bad arguments but it's it's right here in front of us dave ribbed oh did you go to grade school oh you don't you don't know math oh it's only this small percentage listen diana here's the thing. We did <laughs> they're, they're like heaving they're like oh Oh, it's like oh. Did this analogy in the in the podcast about Chuck E. Cheese? Because this is what it reminded me of. Dave, you go to Chuck E. Cheese. Oh my and God! Dad it gives is. you a ten dollar. Oh, it is. And you it's get the, these it's coins. It's the claw on Toy Story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's really not the claw on Toy Story. That the whole thing was some something different. But here's the deal: if you go to an arcade, you're going with a child. Maybe you like going for some reason. You're spending fifteen bucks. Maybe you get about a half an hour of entertainment. And even if you don't turn in tickets and get prizes, you think before you got in that the $15 was worth a fun time. Now, I'm not personally the biggest fan of Chuck E. Cheese, but I do like entertainment. I have a Nintendo Switch. I got it for next to nothing because I had Best Buy reward certificates from reselling activities, and I purchased a game for about $40. And you know, I've gotten a lot of time out of this game. I could play it, I can listen to podcasts, I can listen to YouTube videos, I can do other things, I take it on flights, and I have a lot of fun. I spent money for entertainment. I'm not getting money back, but I'm okay with that trade-off. Now you're spending money at Chuck E. Cheese, you're looking for entertainment. Maybe you get a small rebate at the end in form of a sticky claw or a free pizza or whatever. I'm like, okay, fine. So here, you can take the sticky claw on your way out, or you can take nothing. So you could take the sticky claw. You spend $1,000 that you're going to spend anyway. Here's $20. Oh, no thanks. Dave Ramsey told me not to do that. I'm just going to use cash and debit because a free $20 isn't worth walking away with. Yeah. So you get your coins, and you're so <laughs> excited to, to spend those coins that you spent $10 on, and you go and you get all the tickets, and you get 400 tickets, mm -hmm. and you go to the, the table at the end of the day, and you go, wow, I can get any prize. And they go, no, you get sticky hands and a pack of gum. Yeah, so you got a bonus at the end of that Chuck E. Cheese visit. Have you never gone to an arcade and paid money to play something like Time Crisis, um, a go-kart game, anything else like that? Maybe um, you go to a carnival and you play a game. You think the game is fun. You know, maybe you put $10 and you want a little stuffed toy, but you still thought the game was fun, so you still did it. It's something you were going to do anyway, and here's a possible bonus, and you get it. Now, the bonus might not be an insane bonus, but something is better than nothing. This analogy isn't good. And if we're using credit, it's money that we say, okay, well, hey, I have my rent. I can pay my rent with credit. So why just take it from my bank account 
if I could even get 2% back on my rent, why not take that $15 to $20 back? That's a really easy thing to do. That's a little bit of a rebate. I'm not going out of my way to do it. Maybe it takes an extra two minutes to use the payment portal, but one way or another, I'm paying rent. So why not take the little bonus? And you go, wow, I spent $10 for sticky hands and a pack of gum. That cost a quarter. <laughs> That's not an accurate comparison here. You didn't spend the $10 for a pack of gum. You're not going to go to a local grocery store and say, hey, cashier, I know that this thing costs a quarter, but I'm just going to give you $10. Like, th it's, it's not what's happening here. They're paying the money for the entertainment. And you know what? With this credit card hobby, I've had a lot of fun. I've met new people. I've gone to lots of events. I've unlocked travel I otherwise wouldn't have been able to pay for or wanted to pay for. I've gone on numerous cruises I never would have paid full price for. I've gone to Greece. I've gone to Italy. I've gone to Hawaii. I'm going to Alaska soon. And I wouldn't be spending $1,500 for a cruise, $2,000 for a cruise. I wouldn't be spending, I think it was something like $6,000 it would have been for a round trip business class flight to Italy with the live flat bed with Delta. I would never have spent $6,000 for that flight. But since I was able to use 160,000 Delta Sky Miles, something similar to that anyway with the fare deal, I was more than happy to do that. I spent a few thousand dollars I was going to spend anyway on a new Delta card. I got the points, I redeemed them, and I got the flight. There weren't these crazy blackout dates or restrictions. I was still able to take the flight. It helped to be a little bit flexible, sure. But look, I've racked up tens of thousands of dollars in travel rewards, in cash back, and much more. I stopped keeping track. I was keeping track for several months when I started doing this at a higher level in 2018, but the numbers were so good, I continued doing it today. I'm having fun with it. It's a fun hobby. I'm making money, I'm saving money, I'm traveling. More trips are coming up, and the future is looking really, really good for the hobby. But Dave Rams is like, oh, you get a pack of gum. Oh, it's like, no, we're getting a lot more than a pack of gum using credit. Yeah, and you go, I got screwed, I think. <laughs> so uh, here's the thing. I don't have big buildings, Dave. Uh, the credit card companies do. Yeah, the credit card companies have big buildings because people mess up, because people pay interest, because people get in bad spots. But it's not always the case. It's interesting that Dave Ramsey has big buildings. Oh, Dave Ramsey, you have big buildings. You shouldn't trust Dave Ramsey because Dave Ramsey has big buildings. Like, this is a weird argument. It's a really, really strange argument here. Yes, the banks are making money. Of course, the banks are making money because people are overspending, because people are paying interest, but it doesn't have to be that way. If you're mindful about your spending, you're paying it off in full like the caller was saying, you embrace the frugal life that Dave Ramsey recommends, well, what's the problem? They're sponsoring every stadium in America, and they're doing it with billions of dollars that they're making off yep. of the backs of these the people, people who are overspending. Like you! <laughs> you <laughs> yeah they're making some of their money off of credit people are also defaulting on mortgages so should we not engage with banks at all because banks are making some money because people are defaulting when banks give out mortgages to people that probably can't afford it oh banks are corrupt we shouldn't deal with them at all like is that how far we're going to go here this is something i addressed in a previous episode where they had this moral argument about using credit you know arguing oh the banks are evil because they take money from people well, yeah, there's going to be some kind of failure that makes the system happen. People make mistakes and people profit. People are calling in Dave Ramsey's show talking about their mistakes that they made with money, and they're paying Dave Ramsey to offer certain advice or help or whatever, buy his books, buy his overpriced wallets or pocketbooks with Rachel Cruz, even though the people are claiming to live paycheck to paycheck and uh, questioning her, oh, people can have nice things, you know. <laughs> I was like, okay, so much for the frugal life then. Uh, just just really interesting like it, it's not this uh, oh it's totally evil the banks are totally evil like you could actually make money because you're taking advantage of a system other people are failing and you're winning I mentioned the grocery store example uh, grocery stores will have certain doorbusters they'll say oh well today come in the store and I got this email earlier it's like get a free frozen pizza get a free this get a free that they're giving out some free things because they're hoping people come in the store and buy more but you know what there have been many times I've gone into a store for deal and I only walk out with what the deal is like this weekend Staples is going to be selling fee free MasterCards which is a tremendous tremendous deal when I'm using my chasing cash getting 5x points on these fee-free MasterCards. 
but I'm not going and buying all this other random stuff like, oh, I'm going to buy this like $3.50 7 up or whatever in the fridge and come out with $100 in product. Like I'm being mindful. I have a plan why I'm going there. I'm sticking to the plan and I'm walking out of the store. If you can't have the self-control, then maybe don't go. But many people do. It's not like, oh, everybody's fated to go into debt and pay interest as Dave makes it out to seem here. Yes. Yeah. So, so here's yeah, so the casinos also have big buildings too. Casinos will have many promotions. You can come in on a certain day. We'll give you some happy hour discounts. We'll give you some free play, some match play. I constantly get promotions from casinos. I play poker. I play online blackjack. That's what I do. But I'm not just randomly going in and donking off hundreds of dollars in slot machines. I'm actively telling people not to play slot machines. People are talking about all these games they play, and I say, you know what? It's not a good deal. If you really want to gamble, you can play another game where you're not giving up so much money to the house. With poker, I'm playing against other people, and it's a game of skill. Yes, there's some chance involved, but if you play well in the long run, you're going to end up. Sometimes easier said than done. It's going to take a lot of hard work, but you can do it. You can play blackjack. You're giving up about a half percent edge to the house. You can watch my previous videos that I'm using site bonuses. I'm using promotions to have an advantage. Yes, some people have gambling problems, but to write off gambling is all bad because some people go into debt because some people have problems because some people lose money. It's what Dave is doing here. Oh, well, look, the banks make money, so the banks must be bad. You can't win because the banks make money. No. It's just not the case. I can make money from casinos as well. I can take advantage of promotions at stores. There are all kinds of things that you can do to make money and save money. And just because these businesses turn a profit doesn't mean it's corrupt and that you engaging in it for some reason is, is going to be a losing thing. Here's the thing. Um, to start with, you're, you're not going on vacation for free. <laughs> that is a yeah, that's a straw man. As I said before, people in this space aren't saying, oh, it's totally free. There are no expenses whatsoever. It's highly reduced. Sometimes you can say things like, well, I use points for the hotel room. I didn't have to pay for the hotel room. I use points for the flight. I didn't have to pay for the flight. But it's very, very low cost. We have to pay for other things in some cases, but it's very, very low cost. And that's fine. If I can pay gratuities going on a $1,500 cruise that maybe at the end of the ship I pay about $100 in gratuities for a seven-night cruise, I'm more than happy to do that. And you know what? I can use my altitude reserve card and use points to offset those gratuities. But if you're using cash, you're not going to be doing that. You're not going to be getting the cruise either. Absolute asinine stupid statement. It is. Yeah, so there we go. Asinine stupid. It's just more name calling. It's just not an argument here. You're dumb. Agree with Dave Ramsey or you're dumb. You're stupid. Not true. You might have got your airline ticket for free, but everything else on the vacation was not free. <laughs> so, Dave, you're telling me, oh, well, Justin, you, you went on the first class trip to Italy. You flew out, you used your Delta Sky Miles, but the rest of it wasn't free, Justin. You still had to pay $10 for that lunch, Justin. Oh, it's not really free. <laughs> okay, Dave, have fun Have fun paying full price for your flights. Like, you might have all the money and you don't care, but a lot of people in your audience would be more than happy to save and make money doing these little things I suggest, really easy things to do, <laughs> and take that trip that they otherwise wouldn't be taken. Or save a few thousand dollars. You know, it's not going to be totally free. I could raise, I could discount the price by like 90%, 95%. But oh, it's not totally free, Dave says. So you're spending money and you're going on vacation when you should have been working because you're in debt. <laughs> yeah, we're not like spending money. Well, it's money the caller says they were spending anyway. I'm just putting my everyday purchases on the card and I'm getting rewards. And I'm traveling. I'm like, oh, well, you're in debt, so you should. Well, what, is it, what does it mean to be in debt? So, for instance, I have a car loan. I was more than happy to pay a low interest rate on the car loan rather than fronting the full amount at the dealership. Because now I have more flexibility. And instead of that $10,000 that's paid for the car and it's paid in full, well, guess what? I can invest that $10,000 and make more money. I've opened savings accounts and bank accounts where they say, open a new account and we'll give you $300, $400, $500. Keep the money in there for 90 days. Well, I've already offset the interest that the car loan paid and have more flexibility now. More than happy to pay a low interest rate. Oh, you're in debt, Justin. You owe money. 
because you didn't pay your car in full. How terrible. You shouldn't be traveling. You shouldn't do anything. You should just eat rice and beans and sit at home all day. <laughs> it's like a common criticism of Dave Ramsey. And it's like he's actually going that extreme here. Now, what does it mean in debt? Like what is the caller doing that they're in debt? We didn't hear a description of that. Um, do they owe money on student loans, car loans, whatever? So it's like, oh, we're just going to sit at home and do nothing because we owe money. Now, I'm not saying get into debt, go into more debt. Some debt can be sensible. Don't just randomly, oh, well, I'm going to buy this really expensive sports car that I can't afford and I'm going to go into debt, but oh, vroom, 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 it's fun, beep, beep, you know, whatever. I'm not suggesting that. Don't do that. Don't just get this like $75,000 sports car and go into debt. You're not supposed to be going on vacation when you're in debt. <laughs> we follow everything you say. No, you don't. We follow everything you say. So he's like mocking the callers here. You know, the callers is like, hey, you know, I'm Diane. I, I just like to hear your feedback, Dave. But he's just like mocking the caller here. Like, oh, what a what a great steward of his audience. Like, oh, you're not following what I say. Uh, I would really like to hear the rest of what this in debt means. But I don't believe we got that at all. You don't go on vacation when you're in debt. Yeah, the, the nice thing about credit card miles and points is that I don't have to sweat about vacations. It's, okay, I have this vacation coming up, and I don't have to worry about, oh, do I have money to pay bills when I get back because I spent money on the vacation? I don't have to worry about that at all. Oh, yeah, I owe money for the auto loan, but that's fine because, look, the flight's covered, the hotel's covered. I'm using food benefits to offset some of the food costs. And even if I'm spending something like 30 or $40 a day on meals okay, look, I saved all the other money on the travel and I got to do something. And some people are traveling for maybe conferences. They're learning things, applying to their side hustle. It's not all just like, oh, I'm just going to go relax at a beach and do nothing for five days. And even if that's the case, like, shouldn't people have a break once in a while? Like, is that such a bad thing? And you don't go out to eat when you're in <laughs> you don't go out to eat when you're in debt. Well, actually, a lot of the things I do, I get food for little to no cost. And I, I posted the other day, I mentioned this in another video, I had a $10 credit from American Express. I used that towards a Grubhub order and paid like $2 for Chinese food. Oh, you don't go out to eat when you're in debt. Well, you know, rather than going back home, making something at home, and then going back the opposite direction, I could just pay that $2, free up my time, and just eat on the go. It's a convenience thing. Um, you're really going to hate on like 2 or $3 going out to eat. He's saying you shouldn't go out to eat when you're in debt. It's very, very interesting. If, if you're using credit card benefits, you're going to be saving. Now, the $10 benefit is just once a month. But guess what? I have other Uber Eats benefits from other cards. That's going to be like $40, $50 a month. And I have various grocery rewards that I have because I've been using credit cards to buy gift cards. And I can use those grocery points to eat at the grocery store. They have a cafe area. There's a salad bar. There's so many options. One um, in Giant in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, uh, joined me for monthly meetups, by the way, with Greater Philadelphia Travel. I can use my grocery points to offset the cost of freshly made Chinese food. So because of credit, I'm able to do all of these things to save money. You, you work and you work and you work and you <laughs> yeah you're just going to be a wage slave work 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 don't don't have any fun don't go on vacation sit at home you shouldn't do anything sit back you wage slave slave away at work clean your dadgum debt up and that is <laughs> that, that's the ramsey plan you the, the ramsey plan well you know dave i have a much better plan use credit responsibly manage your finances be mindful take advantage of promotions make money save money travel at next to no cost that's a better plan than work, work, work. You shouldn't be traveling. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. You can say you could, you could go do your plan if you want, but don't say <laughs> you're doing my plan when you're going on vacation. <laughs> this is like scolding the caller. This is great. Because it's just not true. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. It's like the body language. Oh, here's the thing. His like, hand is up and his eyes are squinted. The arrogance. He's <laughs> more more attacks on the collar. The arrogance, the arrogance. That is required. The intellectual arrogance that is required <laughs> for you to think that you are taking on billion-dollar companies who have algorithms that know what bottled water you drink 
<laughs> Sarah's idea, because the banks make money, you can't beat the banks. Because the casinos make money, no one's ever made money card counting in blackjack. No one ever plays poker for a living. No one's ever been a profitable poker tournament player. Oh, Caesars makes money. What are you doing entering the World Series of Poker? The casinos know what they're doing. Like, come on, Dave. You know, yes, businesses make some money, but you can have this relationship with businesses where they make some money, you make some money. So when you're using your credit cards, the banks are making some money off of those merchant fees. The banks are making money because other people are paying interest, not using benefits. They're paying unnecessary fees. But what I'm saying is use credit in a smart way so that you're making money. The bank still has you as a customer. They're happy. You're happy. Everyone wins. Why not do this? You're using cash. You're using debit. You're getting nothing back. You're paying full price for everything. You're missing out on so much. And you are somehow beating them. And you're, yep. you're, you're, you're fleecing them. You're getting an airline ticket. And it doesn't yep. cost you anything. Correct. Yes. Sign up for a new card. Spend on the card, get the welcome bonus, get the points, redeem the points, and you're not spending for the airline ticket. But the Dave Ramsey plan is to use debit and cash, and you're having to pay in full every time. Which plan sounds better to you? Be responsible with credit, not pay for the flight, or use cash and debit and pay full price. You really are pretty arrogant. <laughs> Arrogant. You can't do it. You can't win. Everything Justin is saying. All fraud. All fraud. Justin's never traveled. Justin's just making up about that cruise. Justin's just making everything up. You're arrogant. You're not going to win. You're stupid. To think that you're actually winning at this game. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It's, it's so ridiculous. Like, does, he really thinks that nobody's winning at all? Not, not one person? Not even, like, 5% or 10% of people? Asleep. Do you understand that when when Citibank, when you call <laughs> them, your zip code is pulled off your NSX code, and the your NSX code person answering the call, if it's a friendly call, is a person of the same accent as you. Yeah, not really the case when Citi and many other banks are outsourcing, and you're calling somewhere in maybe the Philippines or India, and you're really not getting people from the same zip code, your NXS code or whatever he said. It's just not always the case. And even if they do make it more likely that you speak with someone who sounds like you, maybe this is their idea of, oh, well, this is going to be a better engagement because this person has a similar accent or from the same area or they're coaching the callers to like ask how the weather is or whatever because they just want it to be a friendlier transaction and they're hoping that if you call in to cancel, maybe you don't. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I go to local grocery stores and cashiers will be friendly to me. And maybe if the cashier is friendly, you're more likely to buy more things. Like, okay, maybe there's some psychological stuff going on. But again, just have a plan before you go in the grocery store so you don't wail out and just spend all this useless money. Or buy all these useless things, spend all this money. When you call the credit card companies, have a plan for why you're calling and what you're doing. Have a plan before you're spending. Be mindful, be smart. If you call from the south, you'll get a syrupy Southern Bell accent. <laughs> and if you call from the wicked northeast, you'll get a wicked northeastern accent. And if you call the Dave Ramsey show, he's going to call you stupid, arrogant, dumber than a rock, dumb as a rock. You're going to th these people screw with you on levels you have no idea and you think you're beating them. Dave Ramsey's a force for good. He's giving you all good information. Yeah, absolutely incredible. So here's the thing. <laughs> We did study. We did a study of millionaires. There's this ad on the bottom of the screen, Every Dollar App, which Dave is almost certainly making some sort of affiliate or referral from. He's, he's promoting a lot of these products and making money. So, oh, Dave is making money. You shouldn't engage in any of those services. This is like Dave is saying about the banks. The banks have big building. The banks have money. How can you trust the banks? Well, Dave is making money from his show. Dave is making money from this partnership with Every Dollar, almost certainly. Uh, you shouldn't trust that. You should, like, come on, Dave. That's not fair. We studied 10,000 of them. 10,167. Yeah. <laughs> not a single one told us we became millionaires with our free vacation points. <laughs> this is a bad argument again. No one said they got rich on points and miles, so points and miles aren't worth it. Nobody got rich on points, so don't use credit. Again, it's not one thing that's going to make you rich. And why is being rich the goal of anything? Hey, Dave, nobody got rich having a hobby building model trains. We surveyed 10,000 people, 
and they never mentioned anything about model trains. So therefore, you shouldn't engage with model trains. We surveyed 10,000 people, and nobody mentioned that they went to see the latest Dungeons & Dragons movie. So you shouldn't go to the movie theaters, because people don't get rich going to the movie theaters. Because we ran all our utilities, our groceries, and everything else through a credit card, and then we went on vacation for free, and it didn't cost us anything, and that's how we built our wealth. Yeah, well guess what? It's extra money. It's found money. They put their expenses on the card, they paid it off in full, and they got a bonus. Even if the bonus is small, why not take the bonus? Not one said that. It's oh, nobody said that. Isn't that odd? Nobody said they became a millionaire because they downloaded the Top Dollar app that Dave Ramsey is promoting. So therefore, you shouldn't download the Every Dollar app. I might have said Top Dollar there, Every Dollar. Like, come on. This is terrible arguments. Diane? So here's the thing. People that ask this question are people that think they're beating the system. Let me tell you how you beat the system. You don't play. <laughs> yeah, don't engage in the system if you can't manage spending. If you can't be responsible, if you can't be organized, don't play. But here's a way you can gain money if you do it in a smart way. So then you do play. Oh, some people get drunk when they go to the bar and make dumb choices. They said they wouldn't do it again, but every time they go, they do it. Okay, great. Don't go to the bar anymore. If you can't manage credit, don't use credit. But if you can be smart about it, if you can use alcohol responsibly, then what's the problem with using alcohol responsibly? What's the problem with using credit responsibly if you can use credit responsibly? Don't play in the system. Yeah. You know what it's like? <laughs> it's like being a mouse in the maze, and you get to the cheese, and you think, I won. I got but I don't know about you, when I redeem the points for the upcoming flight and I don't have to pay full price, I don't have to pay anything for the flight, and I'm sitting in first class, I'm thinking, oh wow, if it weren't for credit, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Oh, Justin, Justin, you're deceived. Justin, this isn't real. Justin, it's not worth it. Justin, you shouldn't have taken this flight because it's not making you rich. You shouldn't use credit cards. You should have just cut them all up. You should have just thrown them away. You're deluded, Justin. You might think that you used your points and got a free flight, but you really didn't. Got the cheese. And you zoom out and you go, no, I'm just a part of a giant social experiment that exists to take my money. <laughs> a giant social experiment that exists to take your money. Yes, the banks want to make money off of you, but you can still profit from relationships with the banks. Yes, you're paying some money to the banks. Yes, you're doing that. I got my car loan. I'm paying some money, but I'm fine with that because I got a good exchange. Hey, look, I paid a $95 annual fee on my Chase Sapphire Preferred, but when I signed up, I got 80,000 points that were well offsetting the $95 annual fee. So imagine walking into a local bank and saying, hey, if you open this savings account or certificate of deposit, we'll hold your money. We'll hold your $100 for three months. And at the end of three months, you come back and we're going to give you $1,000. Oh, I don't know. I don't trust the banks. It's very similar here. Now, honestly, it'll take you a few minutes to fill out a credit card application. It's a little bit of changing your expenses from one card to another, but you really don't have to move your auto pays. You could just use the card for new purchases. You reach the sign up bonus. You could shelf the card. You could use it occasionally and you're still winning. But Dave Ramsey and his co-host, oh, you're like the mouse in the maze. You're manipulated. Nothing is real. You can't trust your own experience. It's all fraud. That's Ooh. what it is. Ooh. Ooh. So you can play that game, and that's fine. You can get your vacations. But I'm not in the, in the business of trying to gain points. I'm trying to gain wealth. <laughs> Why not do both? Why does it have to be points or wealth? Why can't we do both? Why can't the points help us on the journey of gaining wealth? <laughs> I want to complete the baby steps. I want to pay off my house. I want to give outrageous... Yep, you can complete the baby steps. You can pay off your house and accumulate points and miles while you're doing that. And that give outrageously yeah we can still engage in charitable giving if we use credit cards and i would think some people are more apt to do so because they have more life flexibility because they didn't play they didn't pay for that flight they didn't pay for that hotel room it doesn't happen by paying off my card every month and reaping the benefits of two percent cash back you know yeah well you know some people that are living paycheck to paycheck could really appreciate an extra few hundred dollars a month that's coming in like if the debit card suddenly started giving rewards and they say just click this and button and enroll if you spend more money on this debit card then we're going to give you rewards and i've gotten some of these postcards where okay for a limited time you will gain bonus points on certain purchases in this and that category that well your card normally gives one percent at home improvement stores but now it's giving five percent 
on up to $1,500 spend in the next three months, guess what? I'm going to rotate. I'm going to use that card and I'm going to buy things I'm going to buy anyway. I'm going to get extra money. I'm going to get an extra 4%. So why not go in there? I'm in the store for maybe five minutes. I could walk out with that extra $20 or whatever the math happens to be. America loves math. But the Dave Ramsey show, oh, don't bother with any of that. You're being manipulated. It's not real. You're not getting rich from that one thing, so don't bother. You know the Chuck E. Cheese thing's funny as crap. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's great because it's a terrible analogy. Hey, did, the team did a great job with the edits. We got this the coin like, sound <laughs> and everything. You got it. I guess I'll have to find that video if it exists still. They just come to. out of their ski ball or whatever. They're just coming out of there like crazy. You got The war on happiness here. Oh, ski ball. You know, a lot of people will line up and play around a ski ball for a dollar. They get nothing at the end of it, but they still had a good time. Like, why, why are we lamenting entertainment now? Like, very low-cost entertainment. Got this long line of tickets, and your little kid, they think they're getting the big prize, and you get <laughs> You never get the big prize. <laughs> you never get the big prize. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, if, if I've worked in elementary schools before. I've taken some kids to Chuck E. Cheese. I've gone to different community events. We've gone, we spent like, oh, hey, we went to a local train museum and we watched some videos. We saw some historical things and we didn't walk out with anything, but it was an activity. We had fun. Like, oh, don't bother with that. That's not going to make you rich. It's like, are we going to say that's charitable giving too? Like giving your wealth to churches? We shouldn't do that either. Like Dave Ramsey is often saying that, you know, be generous with your giving, donate to the churches. Um, <laughs> should we not do that either? Uh, like it's just very selective with him. Get nothing. It's you got. You spent ten to twenty bucks to get a prize that cost less than fifty cents. Yeah, nobody's walking in the door saying I'm spending the ten dollars to get the fifty cent prize. They're they're doing that for other reasons, as I explained. They're they're just really not getting the point here. And the same thing's happening when you go to book these flights and you go, well, we can go to Boise. Yeah, we can go to Boise because we have extra Delta Sky Miles that we otherwise wouldn't have had if we were just using debit and cash. Yeah, I don't think. Uh American Airlines miles, JetBlue miles, flexible currencies, so much more. Um, even some Capital One cards have purchased a racer where we charge a flight to the card. We use points to offset it. So, yeah, we can go to Boise, Ohio now because we don't have to pay for it and we have more flexibility. Um, Martinique was on the list, was it? <laughs> no. You're not going to the Bahamas first class. I don't <laughs> you're not going to the Bahamas first class. Oh, very interesting. Even though tons of people are reporting doing that. Oh, no, they're not doing that. It's all it's all just made up. Everybody's just lying about it. No one, no one's doing that. I'm like, sorry. No, you, so all, all the travel blogs, everybody with the pictures of their tickets, the pictures of the seats in the flight, explaining the process, breaking it down one by one, all, all the testimonials, all the people saying, you know, hey, I followed such and such advice and I was able to travel. You know, all, all the social media posts, uh, Hurdy Gurdy Facebook, uh, Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast Facebook page. I share so many examples of how I do what I do. I'll share so much evidence. I'll have my picture. I'll have the hotel room. I'll have everything in there. And I'm saying, look, zero or next to nothing. Um, yeah, it's it's really life changing stuff. But they're just laughing about it. Oh, you're not doing that. Belize and Bermuda are not on the list. No. Yep, absolutely. We they are on the list. <laughs> No. They're just they're just never having these conversations with people seriously in the game. They're just making up things. They're just saying, oh, you can't do this. Oh, restrictions everywhere. You can't go to Belize. You can't go to... <laughs> so San Diego's not on the list. Nashville's not on the list. <laughs> it's not on the list. What is this list? See, there, there's no one list. We have multiple cards. We have multiple ways to book flights. We have multiple portals. We have... Direct points with United, Delta, American, JetBlue, many other, <laughs> many other, many. It, it's so bad. I'm just laughing. Like I can't even keep a straight face here. It's so bad. Like people think Dave Ramsey's intelligent and knows what he's talking about when it comes to finance. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, <laughs> he he might have some good points on the frugal life, but when it comes to credit cards, wow, it's so terrible. No, it's blackout. 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 He's whispering now. Blackout days. What's blackout mean? They don't go? <laughs> oh, no. They just won't take you. <laughs> <laughs> they won't take you. Yeah, everybody's lying. All, all these people saying they're traveling all over, they're all just lying. Yeah, it's all, it's all made up. It's all made up. That's what it means. You're, you're in the Matrix. You know, every, everybody's just giving you false information. You're the mouse in the maze. It's all it's all fraud. All fraud. No, no, Nobody's really going on any flights.
it doesn't happen. It's only it's only people using cash and debit. It can't be anyone possibly using credit card rewards. <laughs> I, I think you can do a lot better by using a debit card and using cash. <laughs> you can do a lot better by using debit card and using cash. You're going to do better. You're going to get zero back using debit and cash. You're going to get a lot of rewards with credit cards. You're going to get a lot of life flexibility with credit cards. You're going to get to leverage 0% APR. You're going to get benefits. You're going to get room upgrades. You're going to get statuses. How, how are we doing better with debit and cash? Saving up for your own dang vacations. Yeah, why save up for my vacations when I can just use points for my credit cards to pay for the vacations? Why spend money to travel if I can use points to offset it? How ridiculous. Yeah, you, you know where I go on vacation? Anywhere you want. There you go. You know where I go on vacation? Wait, wait for it. Anywhere I want! <laughs> and I don't pay for it. I don't pay full price. That's how that works. And, y you know, when I use those credit cards, that, that always works. So. America's voice on money, using no credit. He could pay zero for vacations or next to nothing for vacations, but he's just not going to. Interesting, interesting. So, That's how it happens. I haven't had a credit card in, my gosh, it's George. It's coming up on 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> he's so responsible with money that he just doesn't want to manage credit. He, he could take all the flights, but he's just going to tell you that nobody's really taking the flights. Blackout. Blackout. <laughs> I wish. I wish I could just have a, a clone of myself, another social, and just sign up for more cards and just get more. Like, I'm 40 cards now and counting. I've had more over time. I've canceled some. Product changed some. I really... I'm in timeout now. It's uh, late April 2023. I have to wait for more time to pass between applications to get more cards at this time. I'm, I'm so hungry for more cards. I'm so hungry for more discounted travel, close to free travel, free travel, you know, whatever you want to call it, Dave. It's it's incredible that this opportunity is out here in America. I have people from other countries saying, I wish I could get the credit cards that you get in America. Wow. We should have a party. We should. Yeah, let's have a points party. You know, actually, I do meet up with several people at destinations I go to that I otherwise wouldn't meet in person because I use miles of points. You can't use points to pay for the party, though. In belief. Actually, we could use points to pay for the party. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be going on a cruise pretty soon. I'm going to meet other travelers who also use deals to get on the cruise. And guess what? We're not going to have to pay for any of the food either. We're just paying gratuities on the way out, but that's offset again with the U.S. Bank altitude reserve points. Please. <laughs> in Belize. <laughs> I'm in. How about Cabo? Let's go to Cabo. I'm in. Uh, We're heading there. Man. Ha 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 We're paying full price for travel. You guys are really dumb. We're pay we're using cash and debit. You guys are the dumb ones, Dave Ramsey wants to say. And I'm telling you. I love it. <laughs> Great question, Diane. Uh, but a hard he he's growling now. He's growling. He's he's really worked up. Hard answer. Yeah. Well, because I don't know, cash or debit, get nothing back, manage credit responsibly, get a world of rewards. Oh, it's it's tough. It's tough. It's a tough decision. It's passive aggressive, so you need a wrong answer. I mean, hard yeah. answer. what's wrong with doing this? Because we're not going into any more debt. Yet. Mock it, mocking the callers. Uh, what's wrong with doing this? You're not going into more debt. You say, yes, you are going into more debt. How, how is the caller going into more debt? How is there more debt? They're paying it off every month. There's no more debt. You are. You're going into debt because you're not paying off the debt that you have because you're spending money that you don't have to do crap you shouldn't do. <laughs> How does that work? You're you're spending money. The caller is saying I'm paying off the balances on the cards, but then Dave is saying no. You're going into more debt. Very interesting. All right, that's uh, eight minutes here of Dave's video. Let's look at the comments here. See what people are saying. Uh, Josh says Dave has a lot of good advice, but he is just mathematically wrong on this issue. Getting free money for purchases you are going to make anyways is smart and efficient. Absolutely correct. Thumbs up. Jorge, I think Dave disagrees with the strategy because the temptation to get into debt is so easy. But if you are disciplined and only charge what you would have on your debit card, then it can make sense for some people. Utilities, insurance, groceries, gas, etc. I actually take the 2% I accumulate and apply it to my balance every few months. Correct. You can just use that 2% as a statement credit. As they're saying here, free money as long as you can be responsible. Absolutely. But Dave is going to tell you it's all not worth it. You're going into more debt. It's it's just really comical. Uh, thumbs up for Jorge here. Ivan, I would respect Dave way more if his attitude wasn't everyone who disagrees with me is stupid. Have some humbleness, sir. Correct. Thumbs up. Holly, 
says, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing as long as you charge only things you'd normally buy. Dave assumes that you're buying stuff you don't need. He's wrong on the subject. Absolutely correct. Be responsible with credit, earn a world of rewards. Abdel says, when he says you need to spend a thousand to get $20 off is completely missing the point. I'm going to spend a thousand regardless on bills, groceries, food, etc. So if I can get an extra $20 off, then hey, why not? Absolutely correct. So that's a review here in response to The Ramsey Show. Why can't I use credit cards if I pay them off every month? Thank you for listening and stay tuned for future content. Visit hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me. Find me on social media, read episode transcripts, and schedule a free consultation. Support the show through Subscribestar, referral links, and buying from my eBay store. Find the show on many podcast platforms and YouTube where you can find bonus videos. Supporting me on Subscribestar, We'll give you special perks, including a custom podcast episode, questions answered by upcoming guests, and monthly private one-on-one conversations, delving into more advanced topics I don't openly discuss at length in podcast episodes. Visit meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points to learn about Greater Philadelphia Travel, Credit Miles and Points meetups I host in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. I hope to see you in person at a future event. Find a link in the show notes. Listen to my other podcast, the Stoic Solutions Podcast, found at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. My podcast guests and I offer practical wisdom for everyday life, inspired by the ancient tradition of Stoic philosophy from Greece and Rome. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.